smallest particle. Uh, we are told the atom is the smallest. Then we further studied physics. Then the next class they told there are particles smaller than the atoms. Electron, neutron, positron. Then they told even smaller than them they are there. So how can... So they don't know what is the smallest particle. But Krishna is telling that the smallest spiritual particle is achityoyam. It is indivisible. Akletya. It is insoluble. Adaya cannot be burned. It cannot be burned. Generally speaking, um, in the material world, we are always interested in something which is uh, fire resistant, as they call it, fire resistant material. <coughs> in metallurgy or in material sciences, we always are interested in the materials which are um, cannot be burnt. So obviously, if you construct a house with, of the material which cannot be burnt, then you have to leave from the fear of fire. But the soul is naturally adhaya, it is designed to it. I am this soul. Eva Satabi, Ashoshaha, cannot be dry. Generally speaking, everything in the world will be dry. When we visited Siberia once, I was thinking that such cold temperature here, Kimoro and Krasnoyarsk and uh, I said, how the clothes will dry here? It's so cold out here. But still, the clothes were drying. Although we kept them outside the window, they were still drying because of the wind and whatever it is. It took some time, but they were drying. So the soul is cannot be dried. And soul is nityaha. Nitya means eternal. Sarvagataha, it's all pervasive. All pervasive means it, it is capable of going to the sun planet, the moon planet round planet, wherever it is, uh, to the heaven, to the hell, um, everywhere, and to Vaikuntha also, uh, and Golapurinda also. Sthanu is fixed. Achalaha, non-moving. Achala. Achala means actually, like this, Mandara Achala. Mandara Achala, Sundara Achala, Nila Achala. Achala means mountain. Generally, mountains are considered achala, unmoving. But previously, mountains also used to move. They used to fly from one place to another place. But in the cut their wings. But the soul is really achala, non-moving. Ayam, the soul is sanatana. Never existing. Hmm? Means sanatana, not existing. Beginning less time. Ayam, the soul is avyakta, imperceptible. Agatha means not perceived very easily. Huh? Scientists also are debating whether the soul is there or not there. Hmm? Imperceptible to them even also. I am. This soul is achintyaha. Inconceivable. You cannot conceive it by your mind. I am. This soul is vikajaha. Immutable. Unchangeable. Immutable means unchangeable. Like there is. It cannot be changed. Huh? Huh? Is vikajaha. Huh? So, um, immutable. Tasmat, tasmat, therefore, viditva, knowing, uh, evam, like this, na arasi, it is not befitting anushochitam to lament in for this soul. The jivatma is indivisible, insoluble, cannot be burned or dried, is eternal, all pervasive, permanent non-moving, ever-existing, he is imperceptible, inconceivable, being free from the six types of transformation such as birth and death is immutable. After understanding the Atma in this way, it is not proper for the planet. So basically, Krishna is trying to tell Arjuna again and again, don't lament for this body of uh, either the body or the soul of uh, Vishma or anyone. Huh? Because they are not going to die, they are not going to die. I mean, if we kill them, they are not going to die. Their body will only die. And that is the whole thing, this whole Bhagavad Gita is told. Because Vishma, Vishma Dhona Tata Jadrata Jala Gandhara Nirupala Shalya Grahavadi Krupena Vahani Karnena Vela Kula Ashtham Vita 
ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಹೋರ ಬಕರ ತುದಿಯೋ ನಾ ಬರ್ತು ಸುತ್ರಾಥಲವರು ರಣದಿ ಕವರ್ತಕ ಕೇಶವ ವೆರಿ ಫೆರಸಸ್ ವಾರಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ದ ಕುರುಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ವಾರ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಟು ರಿವರ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ವರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಶಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ದೇ ವರ್ ಶಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ಫ್ಲೋಟಿಂಗ್ ದೇ ವರ್ ಕ್ರಾಕಡೈಲ್ಸ್ ದೇ ವರ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಡೇಂಜರಸ್ ಸಿ ಕ್ರೀಚರ್ಸ್ ತಿಮಿಂಗಲ ಫಿಶ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಗ್ ತಿಮಿಂಗಲ ಫಿಶ್ ವರ್ ದೇರ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ರೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಬೋಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅಬೋರ್ಡ್ ಅ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಬೋಟ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ and you are trying to cross an ocean ferocious ocean atlantic or pacific how can you cross understand in a small boat unless you are a good captain like when shila bhakti dan sai maharaj was crossing atlantic to go to new york he said that he had uh, two heart attacks and shila and the captain mr captain was sharma mr captain sharma told that i have never seen atlantic so peaceful Maybe Swami Ji was on the board and that's why Bhagavan showed mercy to us and Atlantic was peaceful. And Sai Maharaj said that Atlantic would have shown the real precious face, I would have died. Hmm. Then he had a dream, he saw that 10 incarnations of Bhagavan were rowing a boat and he was sitting in that boat. Then he realized that the whole, all the incarnations and Krishna himself is protecting him. Rakhi Krishna, Mare Ke, Mare Krishna, Rakhi Ke. So, um, so actually uh, this verse is very very important verse okay. that achetyam adayam aklyad ashachayvacha nit sarvagana sthano achaloyam sanatana so actually the self is indivisible unburnable insoluble and cannot be dried up it is eternal all pervading changeless non moving un moving and pre primeval since the soul is indivisible achedya it cannot be cut the soul is indivisible it cannot be cut it cannot be burnt because it is unburnable adaya the soul cannot be moistened by water because it is insoluble nor can it be withered by wind because it cannot be dried up thus the effects stated in the previous verse are by products of the soul's qualities mentioned in this one Uh, so the second half of this was explains why the soul is not subject to the effects of the above mentioned vapors because it is eternal nitya all pervading sarvagatah changeless sthanu unmoving achalah primeval sanatana it is not subject to any transformation whatsoever something subject to action causes a result of that action such as production acquisition transformation change of condition being eternal the soul is not produced since it is all pervading it cannot be acquired being changeless it is not transformed and being unmoving it is not subject to any change of condition for emphasis the word eva surely is intended to modify <coughs> all of the soul's qualities mentioned in this verse jiva goswam explains the word sarvagata has meaning dependent gata on god who is everything sarva everything is but god and his energies one who is aware of this and thus depends exclusively on god in all circumstances experiences all pervasiveness to his dependence on he who is all pervasive so basically it's a very very important verse this verse is very very important that nitya sarvagara sthan achaloyam sanatam ಅಚ್ಛೇಯಂ ಅದಾಯೋಯಂ ಅಕ್ಲುದ್ಧ ಅಶುಚೈವ ನಿತ್ಯ ಸರ್ವಗತ ಸ್ಥಾನ ಅಚಲೋಯಂ ಸ್ನಾತನ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ಡಿವಿಸಿಬಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲೆಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಆತ್ಮ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಎಸ್ ಇನ್ವಿಸಿಬಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ರಿಪಿಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಇಟರ್ನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಜೀವಾತ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಮೂವ್ಸ್ ದ ಡೌಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಅನ್ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಇಫ್ ಒನ್ ಸೇಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಇನ್ ಕಲಿಯುಗ ದ ರಿಪಿಟೇಷನ್ ದ ರಿಪಿಟೇಟಿವ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ ದ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಡೌಟ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಧರ್ಮ ಇನ್ ಕಲಿಯುಗ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ರಿಪಿಟೇಷನ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆ
like for example repetition is always there hare nama hare nama hare nama iva kevalam kalau naste iva naste iva naste bhagatranya ka three times told hare nama hare nama hare nama iva kevalam kalau naste iva naste iva naste bhagatranya ka in kadyuga there is no other way there is no other way there is no other way so then three times when it is told and we understand oh really it is very clear that there is no other way but hari naam huh? so so here also again and again krishna is telling that jivatma cannot be destroyed jivatma has no death understand um, similarly jivatma's qualities have been repeated to confirm the eternality of his nature Here the word Sarvagata all purpose indicates that due to his own actions, the jiva transmigrates to all species of life such as devas, human beings, animals, and birds. Understand? So you'll see that actually um, the living entity transmigrates to devas. He is devi god also. So it is possible that the living entity or some particular type of devi god, Indra, Chandra, Varun, Sudha, uh, like this. And a living entity sometimes becomes human being, sometimes becomes an animal. Actually, so many types of animals. I never even knew that they existed. Many times I see, like Discovery Channel and YouTube, many videos they upload, and you don't know that there are so many animals, so many species of snakes, so many types of fish, so many types of uh, you know, reptiles, wild animals are existing. Understand? You don't actually uh, previously didn't know that, but with the advent of internet, uh, you get so much information. And you can see the video, and you see that there are so many types of animals. Like recently in India, some cheetahs, cheetahs, and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, uh, he six cheetahs we inquire, we got from Namibia, in Africa. The cheetahs were previously in India, but they became extinct. Means they got. So much uh, people used to raise cheetahs in India previously as pet animals, uh, but then they got extinct. So again, Narendra Modi ji, our Prime Minister of India, he got cheetahs, and they are the fastest land animals, running at 110 kilometers per hour speed, uh, like a train. And you see that there are so many types of animals are there. You know, so many types of monkeys also. So many types of monkeys there: the gorilla, chimpanzee. Langur in India, Langur red monkeys are there. Then there are birds also. There are birds of prey. There are um, you know um, eagles, owls, and so many types of. Uh, previously, I was thinking there is only one type of parrot, but then there are parrots, and there are so many types of macaws and all. You know, you see now in India also when we go to the pet store. Mm. In South Africa, also once we see that they never even went. We used to come across pet stores, departmental stores, and all. You know, so many types of birds, so many varieties of fish and birds are there. Uh, so living entity can go to all these species. Actually, the words "thano," fixed, and "achala," immovable, have been repeated in order to give a clear conception of the stable nature of the jivatma. The jivatma is stable. Stano fixed. The jivatma is called abhyakta, imperceptible because it is, is very subtle. What do you mean by subtle? Actually, subtle means mind, something very subtle. For example, um, what is going on in my mind is very subtle. What is going on in your mind is very subtle. But sometimes we can detect what's going on in someone's mind by the facial expressions. But it's very subtle also to expressions uh, and. Um, Sometimes, so Jivatma is very subtle than even mind. So how subtle he must be? He is called Achinte, inconceivable, beyond reasoning, because he pervades the whole body as consciousness. Now there is a Dalvin example. I think Shri Guru Dev is giving that uh, how the living entity pervades the whole body as consciousness. So the Guru Dev gives an examples of. Um, Chandan, Hari Chandan. Hari Chandan is such a cooling that if you put one dot of Hari Chandan on your forehead, 
even in hot sun you will be feeling very cool if you put a dot, dot of kasturi pure kasturi which is found in the navel of one particular type of deer in himalayas in tibet so if you put kasturi or musk dot on your forehead you will feel very hot even if it is very cold outside so like that the jivatma is in the heart but the signs of consciousness manifest in the entire body so he is called avikarya immutable because he is free from the six type of transformation such as birth and duration of existence so that is that you have to understand what are the six type of transformations so um, the jivatma basically um, doesn't have to undergo this six type of transformations there is uh, birth duration of existence growth procreation diminution and death understand like you see that there is birth there is birth uh, and uh, generally human beings give birth to one child but you see fish give birth to hundreds of fish understand so many species give birth to many many baby fish or uh, eggs and then they hatch eggs hatch and so many uh, living entities take birth uh, generally i will go for preaching i see that one hen is Working with maybe ten chicks, about eight chicks, ten chicks. I am seeing uh, means that hen has laid eggs and the eggs hatched. The chicks came out and the chicks. Uh, obviously, hen is not a mammal, so the chicks from day one they have to eat the grains or insects. But they know who is their mother actually. The chicks can recognize, uh, and you see that birth is there. Then death is also there. That's one transformation. So birth and death, the two transformations, main transformations. But there are some other transformations also. If someone that raises the question, will the soul not die? Even figuratively, at the death of body, she can answer no. The soul has no relationship uh, with at all with the body. Understand? So basically, the soul has no relationship with the body. Huh? So soul doesn't die at all. So here, um, very clearly told that the soul has no death. So very good verse actually. Achyapyo yam adayo yam aklepyo ashochye vacha nitya sarvagata sthano achalo yam sanatana avyakto yam chintyo yam avikaryo yam uchchati tasmat evam vidit. So actually, uh, not only Arjuna, but many times we also lament. Uh, we also many times lament for someone of our relatives dying, or we are also sick. We are sick ourselves. Uh, some people are identified with terminal disease, or some relatives are identified with terminal disease. These verses give so much um, comfort, actually, solace to the heart. We don't get totally uh, mad. Uh, just Learn that oh it's just normal it's just normal the body has to dwindle one day. Uttidan Sai Maharaj in his famous Gita is telling achyatya means unbreakable. I am this soul. Adhaya unable to be burnt. Huh? I am this soul. Akledya insoluble. Ashosha soluble means basically <coughs> common salt. Common salt you put in water it will mix with water and get dissolved. Obviously, it's in the water which has pH, normal pH. But if the if you are putting salt in the Black Sea water, then it will not dissolve because it's already too saturated with salt. Understand? Like in Israel, I think the Black Sea or something, whatever it is that um, you can drown in that sea because it has such so many salts are dissolved in it. That it's um, extremely heavy water, you just can't drown. Uh, so it's like the salt being dissolved in the water, or the um, alum being dissolved in the water. Uh, the soul cannot be dissolved in the water. The soul is cannot be dried up also. Shosha, eva, certainly, sure. Nitta is everlasting, everlasting. Sarvagataha, all pervading. Sthanuhu, 
unchangeable. Acharaha immovable. I am the soul. Sanatana, eternally the same. This individual soul is unbreakable and insoluble. Can be neither burned nor dried. He is everlasting, present everywhere, unchangeable, immovable, and eternally the same. All these qualifications of the atomic soul definitely prove that the individual soul is eternally the atomic particle of the spirit whole. And he remains the same atom eternally without change. So here Bhaktidan Saimara is telling that we are the atomic particle of the spirit whole. Spirit whole is Krishna and we are his atomic particle. And we remain an atom eternally. <coughs> we don't become Krishna or don't become bigger than Krishna. We stay the atomic only. The theory of monism is very difficult to apply in this case because the individual soul is never expected to become one homogeneous. Now, actually, theory of monism says that after you die, you become Brahma. You merge in Brahma. So, uh, Shila uh, Gurudev also has said, actually, um, and uh, in Mayavad Jivani, the life history of Mayavad by Srila Pati Prakyan Kesha Goswami Maharaj in that book, he has very strongly refuted the philosophy of monism. You cannot be one with God, not possible. After liberation from material contamination, the atomic soul may prefer to remain as a spiritual spark in the effulgent rays of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but the effulgent souls enter into the spiritual planets. But intelligent souls enter into the spiritual planets to associate with the personality of God. So if you want, you can stay in the effulgent rays of the Supreme Personality of God. It means you can stay at the line of demarcation. It means in Brahma Jyoti, you can stay there. But what is the point? Like suppose after a long holiday in a college or school, for vacation you have come home. And once you come home, you don't enter the home, but stay at the door of the house and don't want to enter the home. Your mother will say, oh, come on, you are away for last semester, six months I didn't see you. Why are you not coming inside? Say, no, I just want to stay at the gate, gate of the house or at the door, at the doorstep. I don't want to come inside. So once you have got liberated from the material world, then what you are supposed to do? You have to enter the spiritual world to relish the past times. In material world, there was only one particular type of melo was there, and that is a melo of uh, Karunaras. Karunaras actually uh, means melo of um, compassion, actually. Hmm. This is the only melo that is in the material world. Karunaras. You see everywhere the Karunaras. Karunaras is the melo of compassion. Understand? So this material world is also Karuna Lila of Krishna. Uh, uh, so here actually, um, Sri Krishna being the embodiment of uninterrupted supreme bliss, there is no possibility of any harm coming to him. But when devotee out of intense love thinks that some calamity may befall him, he becomes the object of Karuna Rasa for that devotee. Uh, generally, actually sometimes, Bhagwan feels compassion for us, and sometimes we feel compassion for Bhagwan. Is it possible that Krishna have uh, encountered any harm? Not possible. But sometimes Mother Yashoda is worried. Oh, Putana attacked him, Agasur, Bakasur, so many teams are attacking him like this. Then Krishna is the object of that mellow of compassion. And we are the objects of Krishna's compassion, basically. We are the objects of Krishna's compassion. Krishna is also very compassionate uh, to devotees. Uh, he cannot tolerate the suffering of the devotees. Understand? So basically, the jivas they are eternally waiting to enter into the Vaikuntha. And now this is a great opportunity, human form of life. Like you are studying the projectiles in mechanics, and projectile needs something called escape velocity. Mm. Or you are hearing that any missile theory or anything. Then you want to escape the gravitational field of Earth, then you have to have certain escape velocity. How the satellites are launched by ISRO uh, or NASA, they put them on top of a rocket. The rocket has 
very high velocity called escape velocity. Otherwise, it cannot escape the gravitational pull of the Earth very easily. Understand? So, in human form of life, we have that escape velocity to go to the Golok Vrindavan or Vaikuntha. Now, the word Sarvagata, all pervading, is significant because there is no doubt that living entities are all over God's creation. Sarvagata means uh, the living entities are everywhere. They live on the land, in the water, in the air, within the earth, and even within fire. Like so many types of living entities we see on the earth, dogs, hogs, horses, donkeys, monkeys, everywhere on the land. And there are some living entities, uh, they live in the water. So water uh, has many types of aquatics, uh, not just fish, but there are crocodiles also living in water and so many, so many types of living entities are in shelter of water. Then in air also there are actually uh, uh, living entities. Actually, aqu aquatic world is another uh, world by itself. Understand? What goes on inside the oceans, we generally don't know. Like once I was in America. So in America, I was living in San Diego. There is one German devotee by name Sadananda Prabhu. Farm. And he was into health food business. So they used to make some health foods, like some bars made from sesame bars, jaggery and sesame and honey, like you know, Nutella bars, like you know, nutrition bars. And once he got some big, big, thick green, uh, uh, you know, uh, lean green material, which is, he said that this is from the ocean. And they were making some nutritious bars from this. It's called Nori actually. You might have heard of Nori actually. Then he, then he said, this is the seaweed. It's very healthy. It has a lot of nutrition. So no wonder that the fish eat this seaweed and becomes very strong. Understand? So in the ocean also, there are so much vegetation is going on. And people try to get that seaweed, you know, Nori and all, eat it also. So God's creation is, I mean, you never know all these things. Understand? If you travel all around the world, you, uh, uh, like when I was in Sarandabu's farm, then I saw this particular animal called Yama. Hmm. Yama or Lama. Huh? Lama or Yama, the spirit, double L L A M A, Lama or Yama. So I I was surprised to see this animal. This was looked like a small camel in shape. It had also the quality of a goat. Understand, but that animal could climb mountain hills, mountains, uh, mountain terrains, like you know, the top of a mountain very easily. So it had the quality of a mule. Mule means cross between a donkey and a horse. So uh, I said, "Wow, this animal is." And also that llama or llama used to give some horn to the sheep. I said, "Wow, there are so many qualities in one animal." Like it has a cross, like a shape like camel, but gives wool like sheep, understand, and runs like a deer and can climb mountain like a mule. I said, wow, it's a very useful animal, understand. So Bhagavan made like this, so many times. This is God's creation. So, so many living entities live in the air also, airborne bacteria, airborne viruses, we heard about, understand. And uh, um, air also, so many types of living entities are there. Within the earth, inside the earth you dig also, you'll see so many types of snakes are there. Snakes you dig inside the earth. Uh, actually, underneath the earth, there's a lower parallel system, there are so many snakes. Underneath the earth, actually no, no living entity can go the underneath the earth. But under the earth, we heard that Bhagavatam tells us that there are many snakes and on their hoods there are jewels and through the jewels the light is coming out and that lower planet systems are illuminated by the jewels on the hoods of the snakes. Now apparently the snakes have jewels on their hoods and they say that they are very dear 
these jewels are very dear to the snake. In the absence of that jewel, the snake will live its life. Understand? Uh, so basically, the snake is teaching us something. Just like you take away the jewel from the hood of the snake, the snake will give up life in separation. Understand? What basically the snake does sometimes, it has a jewel on the head, then it will keep the jewel on the ground. Why the jewel is given on the hood to the snake? Because snake's vision is not very strong. And the snake has to hunt in the dark. So how the snake with not good eyes able to catch the insects and other um, animals which it is preying on like frogs and all, not possible. So the God has given the snake a jewel on the head. It will keep the jewel and in the light of the jewel start hunting. Understand? Sometimes the some people they very cruel and they uh, cover the jewel by a cloth. Understand? So the snake cannot see anymore where the jewel is and then the snake dies in separation of that jewel because the snake loves the jewel very much. So like that you should love God. Understand? Just the snake loves its jewel. And gives up life without absence of jewel. Huh? So actually, we should not think that uh, the jewels are imaginary. Eh? Bhagavata, Patyoli also the there is a story. Bhagavatam also talks about the jewels on the hoods of snakes. So, Nagamani, that is true. Mm, these are real things. Understand? So living entity is everywhere. Lower primary system also. There are two, so many types of snakes. Karkotaka, Kaliya, and so many snakes have been described. Mm. And uh, in the water also, in the air, in the earth, and even within fire, there are living entities. Now, that is very surprising. Uh, we generally think that nothing exists inside a fire. Hmm. Nothing inside a great fire. But they found that uh, bacteria can survive even inside fire. Uh, understand? That is very, very surprising. Means. Um, so inside fire, uh, uh, um, there are some living entities are there. Uh, and there are living entities living on the sun planet also. Our scriptures tell us, right, that the living entities, uh, they live in the sun planet also. Uh, so no doubt that living entity is Sarvagataha. You know. So the belief that they are in fire is not acceptable because it is clearly stated here that the soul cannot be burned by fire. So basically, pasture, Louis Pasture and other people they and they talked about sterilization, pasteurization of milk and all. Sterilization. So generally, our concept of sterilization is like previously there were not disposable syringes, needles. In my childhood, I remember there were not many disposable needles available. So we had to use the same inject, same syringe and same injection for so many people, our doctor, family doctor, Mr. Borgaukar. Dr. Borgaukar, what he used to do is to take the needle and he used to boil it in water, actually, hot water. And again, he used to do, use that to give injection. That was his sterilization. But still, living entities will be there, understand, even at high temperature. There, there is no doubt that there are living entities also in the sun planet with suitable bodies to live there. Understand? You can go to the sun planet. There are descriptions of living entities going to the sun planet uh, in Bhagavatam and Swami uh, Radharani also went to the sun planet of Kalpana. Kalpa. So if, in, if the sun is un, 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 uninhabited, then the word Sarvagata, living entity, is Everyone becomes meaningless. The scientists say there is no, no life from the sun. That is what our scientists say, NASA scientists would say. We don't think there can be life on the sun. But you see that Bhagavad Gita says, Nitya Sarvagata Sthano Rachalo Sanatana. The living entity is going to the sun planet also, and there must be life on the sun also. So this is the power of Bhagavad Gita, understand? It teaches us what is beyond the knowledge of NASA and Hindu and all the scientific community. 
अव्यक्तोयम अचिंतोयम अविकारियोयम उच्चते तस्मादेव मिलित्वेन नानु शोचित महारसी नाउ कृष्ण इज टेलिंग दैट अव्यक्त इट इज इनविजिबल द सोल इज इनविजिबल नॉट ऑफ बी सीन बाय अ नेकेड आई what to speak of seeing the soul by naked eye cannot see it by the most powerful electronic microscope you have the electronic microscope can see so many subatomic particles but it cannot see the soul by that electronic microscope otherwise the scientist would have looked at it i am the soul achintya it is inconceivable i am the soul is avikarja unchangeable ayam visol uchyate said tasma therefore evam like this viritva knowing it well yena visol do not anushochit to lament you deserve so it is said that the soul is invisible inconceivable and immutable knowing this you should not grieve for the body again and again bhagwan is telling um, don't lament Don't lament, and we should also not lament in this material world. Uh, anything may uh, may happens in our life, we should not lament, uh, because um, Rupa Goswami also uh, has told us in um, one shloka: "Shloka marsha divir bhave akranta yasya manasa kadam tasya mukundasya spurti sabhavana bhave." This great book Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.2.115. Sri Rupa Goswami says, "Shoka Marsha Divir Bhavai, Arkarantam Yasya Mahana Sam, Katham Tatra Mukunda Sya Spurti Sambhavana Bhavai." How can Mukunda manifest in the heart of a person who is filled with emotions like grief and anger? If you have grief or if you are angry, then Mukunda cannot manifest in your heart. So we have to be very, very careful. Hmm. Padma Purana also says like this: "Shoka Marsha Divir Bhavir Akarantam Yasya Manasam Katham Tasya Mukundasya Spurtim Sambhavana." Within the heart of one who is full of anger or pride or lamentation about the state of his wife or sons, there is no possibility of Krishna being manifest. Many people are very attached to their wives and children. Understand? It is good to be. You no doubt that we love our wives, children, husbands, everything. No doubt about it. It's okay. It is natural. We love our children and wife. But suppose uh, what will happen if your wife leaves you? What will happen? Or she dies, or she divorces you? What will happen? Or suppose what happens if children don't take care of in old age and they just abandon you? What will happen? Will be a mental wreck, or will you just remember the instructions of teachers and not lament? You'll be better off not lamenting. Otherwise, you might lose your mental balance, emotional balance. You may become crazy, or you might take the final step like. Ultimate step of suicide and all. Understand? Suicide. So many p news we read that you know, wife uh, divorced the husband and uh, husband ended the life or wife ended the life. Understand? So there is nothing to nothing you should lament for. Neither your children nor your wife. I don't tell. I'm not telling you be impersonal with your wife and husband. But I'm just telling don't be attached. And here Padma Purana is also telling. Uh, Don't be attached to these things. Uh. So this loka concerns one whose heart is afflicted by lamentation and anger. Amarsha means anger and shoka means sadness. If you lose material things, you become very sad. If you are always absorbed in these two things, then mukund the meaning Bhagwan Krishna will not manifest in your heart. If your mind is disturbed, if your heart is disturbed, thus contaminated by these two things. Krishna will not manifest there. Simple, understand. Therefore, try to keep your heart very pure in all circumstances. If you lose anything in this world, Guru Dev is telling, what harm is there? Understand. If you lose anything in this world, 
no water harm is there. <laughs> Actually, it's easier said than done. Understand? <laughs> but the Gurudev is telling us what harm is there. But if for us, there is a big harm if you lose something. Understand? There was one devotee, I think, Ramchandra Prabhu, Delhi Temple President. And once he was outside, was <laughs> talking on mobile phone outside Delhi Temple. Ravan Vyari Gaudiyamak in there, Janakpuri, those who have gone there. And some thief came and he just snatched the phone as he was talking. <laughs> it was dark, like he took one. He just snatched the phone from Ramchandra Ram the room and he could not do anything. What he can do? And once I was sleeping on a station with a bag, and uh, it was my first mobile phone. Shiva Dandi Maharaj had given me that. I still remember Sony Ericsson small feature phone. But it was very rare. Like, this is a long time ago, 10 years ago. Um, it was a big deal to have a feature phone that time. Shiva Dandi Maharaj got from Chennai. And uh, I was sleeping on one RCK station, and when I fell asleep, on the platform and someone came and he just cut the cut my bag and he took away my phone and everything. Uh, even my japa mala was taken up. I lamented like, oh, Gurudev gave me that mala. But Maharaj assured me, oh, this japa mala, I'll give you another one. I have Gurudev has chanted one mala, I give it to you. Then that was the second mala also I lost. So actually you are not supposed to lose the mala given by Gurudev. But in preaching, I twice I lost the mala. And then finally, uh, you know, so the point actually that I'm selling, telling is that we lament. Uh, obviously, we should lament if we have lost the mala given by Gurudev. Obviously, many times devotees used to come to Gurudev. Gurudev, I have lost the mala which you gave me. The Gurudev said, why you are not lost? I only mala. He has also been lost. He was angry. Understand? Because that's our relationship with Gurudev. But sometimes it happens like, you know, or just beyond your control. But many people tell, oh, I lost my Harinam. Actually, you should not say that I lost Harinam. You cannot lose Harinam. You must lose your Mala. <laughs> Harinam cannot be taken away by anyone. Thank God. Understand. Um, so, um, Sri Rupa Goswami and Shri Sanatan Goswami were highly posted officials in the government. But they left their positions. Why? We want to engage all our property in Krishna's service. But they left their property. If your property is later stolen or lost, why lament? Uh, don't lament. Otherwise, your heart will be impure and you will be you'll not be able to remember Krishna. Understand? Like so many devotees I have seen that they have prosperous real estate business, stock business, and then they suddenly lose that money. Like um, I have seen uh, some devotees. They used to support so much, and then uh, our mission of Krishna consciousness, Gurudev also. And then they lost. <laughs> they lost. They became bankrupt, literally on the verge of bankruptcy. It happens. But uh, if that happens also, Gurudev is telling, don't lament. If you are, suddenly your prosperous business collapses, and you come on the verge of bankruptcy, uh, there's nothing to lament. Huh? Yavat Satsa Nirvaha Sri Kurya Tavadartha Vid Adike Nyunatamcha Chavate Parmartha. Now, these are very, very important words. If a devotee accepts those things necessary for the maintenance of life, it does not mean he is a sense enjoyer. Understand? Obviously, you need some sabji, you need chapati or rice, some staple food. You need, obviously, some mat to sleep upon, and you know. So these are necessities. And if you are in India, you need a mosquito net. You may not have a mat to sleep upon. You can sleep on the floor or the ground, but you need a mosquito net. We have so many mosquitoes. <laughs> um, mosquitoes, once I went to Navadhi with some devotee, uh, Hesargatta devotee, the good friend of Shri Maharaj. He has, uh, he's actually the caretaker of Sri Venugopal temple, the deed is installed by Pandavas near Hesarkatta. Very mm. beautiful deed of Venugopal, so Mr. Gauda. So both of us reached uh, Navadip Mutt, Yeshaji Gaudiya Mutt, Navadip, very late. 
So Guruji was on the planet that time, and ten o'clock or something. And we didn't have mosquito net, and so many mosquitoes all night. Uh, both of us were almost awake. Uh, then we realized actually you have nothing, but you should have a mosquito net. Uh, Bengalis they are very smart. They must live anywhere, but they will always carry a mosquito net with them, and they will always have a very big, big strings. One string maybe will connect here, there, and somehow sleep under the mosquito net and get sleep. Bengali devotees come for parikrama, northi parikrama. They sleep open, open also many times with mosquito net. Without mosquito net, a Bengali devotee will not live for parikrama. Understand? What I'm trying to tell is that um, certain things you need. Huh? Like what to speak of us, even Sanatana Goswami was troubled by mosquitoes in Chakra Chakraeshwar temple. Lord Shiva told him, I assure you, henceforth no mosquito will come here. So devotees neither accept too much nor too little. Huh? So don't think that, oh, don't eat too much or too little. Bhagavadita will tell us further. Huh? Or don't collect, over collect or under collect. Just whatever required, you just accept that. Hmm? Uh, because if you accept too much or too little, then that will hamper your progress towards your goal. Narada Purana says that. So, for whom has this sloka been told? It has not been told for the Karishtarik. The Karishtarik the should engage his money and everything else for Krishna. But this sloka is for those who have Ruchi. It is for those like Shiva's Pandit, they think whatever comes, okay. They chant the holy name and remain undisturbed. Even if death comes, they are not disturbed. Rather, they think many diseases may come or relative may die, no harm. They are always satisfied and they are always chanting. Like you see that Shiva's Pandit's son died when Mahaprabhu Sankirtan was going on. And if you don't disturb Mahaprabhu Sankirtan, otherwise I will commit suicide. Don't cry loudly, otherwise Mahaprabhu Sankirtan will disturb. Mahaprabhu says that someone has died. So Shiva's Pandit never was, uh, he never compromised. He never lamented even for the death of his son. He never worked hard for his livelihood. He was simply doing Nama Sankirtan. So disease may also come, understand? No harm. <clears throat> Like Srila Gurudev's life also, you see that he, is, um, he underwent many, many operations. Understand, Srila Gurudev. So many operations and so much uh, sometimes hospitalized. But he always chant, kept on chanting on the intercontinental flight uh, from this continent to that continent. He used to chant three lakh holy name in the flight. Never used to sleep, chanting, chanting, one lakh, two lakh, three lakh. He, even those who accompanied him, they say that they never slept on the flight. He kept on chanting all the time. Understand? So here, um, very clearly told uh, that these qualities of um, the living entity. Uh, so we are all eternal. Uh, there is no soul of understanding the identity of the father except for the authority of the mother. So this, this we have to accept the very wisdom. As far as the soul's existence is concerned, no one can establish his existence experimentally beyond the proof of Shruti or big wisdom. It is not possible to uh, find the existence of the soul. Because the soul is weightless, understand. Like, for example, if the soul was weighing 10 kilos, then you can measure living person and dead person, their bodies. So when someone is alive and when someone has died, and you can find a weight difference. But the soul is so subtle that you know, on the weighing scale, you cannot find the weight of the soul. Understand? So, um, absolutely you cannot establish. One Vedic wisdom. We have to accept this truth. Because there is no other source of understanding the existence of the soul, although it is a fact by perception. It's a fact by perception because what is the difference between dead body and living body that you can see? Living body, if you cut, even if you 
pluck out one hair from the head, giving entity will scream. Suppose someone will pluck one hair from my head, then we are excruciating pain. Mm. Like there are many Jain sadhus, there is one religion in India, Jain religion. Mm. They take renounce order of life. Males and females, <coughs> especially males, what they do, they just pluck the hair of the sadhu. When you take their renounce order of life, they just pluck the hair with the hands, with fingers. I said, thank God I am not <laughs> taking sannyas in Jain order. You know, imagine your hair being plucked, you know. It must be so painful, actually. I am not criticizing that religion, but I am saying that it is so painful. Then I asked, many Jain persons are good friends. I said, how come your sadhus tolerate that hair being plucked? Then he said that they, they apply some medicine there or something. But I said, whatever it is, you know, oh, wow, it, should be, it may be so painful. And they actually pull out the roots of the hair. So the hair practically almost grow, don't grow or grow very less. In Jain Sadhu, you see that they are almost permanently bald. Because the roots of the hair are gone, then hair almost never grow or they grow very, grow very little. And our hair are growing. And uh, Purnima, this Purnima will get rid of her hair. Understand? So, you know, anyways, um, but they, they are sadhus also for the Chaturmas. Understand? Not only the Hindu sadhus or Vaishnava sadhus, Mayavadis, Jain sadhus also for Chaturmas. And they also respect uh, cows and other animals, and especially they don't want to kill cows. And they do Chaturmas. In Bangalore, also many Jain sadhus come and they do chaturmas in their own temples. Uh, so, <clears throat> so uh, what I'm telling is that um, we have to accept this truth because there is no other source of understanding the, the existence of soul, although it is affected by perception. There are many things we have to accept solely on grounds of superior authority. In this material world, also, uh, one simple example is given. No one can deny the existence of his father uh, based on the authority of his mother. There is no source of understanding the identity of the father except by the authority of the father. Well, speaking, the mother will tell you exactly huh, that who is the, who's the father of the son. Understand? Like Bhagavatam also story comes that uh, when Buddha was born, then there was a Big fight between the moon and Braspati. Braspati's wife Tara, she was asked, Who is the son of, who is the father of Buddha? You have got a son by the name, you are pregnant. You are pregnant, and uh, who is the father of your baby in your womb? Tara wasn't replying, she was feeling shy. But she was married to Braspati. Apparently, the baby was belonged to the moon god. The moon son was Buddha. Understand? And finally, she told very shyly that actually it is the baby of the moon, Chandra. Understand? So only mother can tell us who is our father. Similarly, there is no source of understanding the soul except by studying the Vedas. So actually, that's why you understand that the Veda is called the mother and the Guru, Diksha Guru is called father. Understand? Just like we take birth from our mother who gives the eggs and father who gives the semen. So by the combination of mother six and semen of father, we are born. So mother is the mother is there. So similarly, our second birth or our Daiksha Janma, we are initiation is also a birth where Guru is the uh, father and, and the Veda Mata Gayatri is the mother. Understand? We take a second birth from Mother Gayatri, Vedas. Understand? The Shrutis are the Vedas or mother. In other words, the soul is inconceivable by human experimental knowledge. There are so many types of experiments. I have seen from childhood, I have seen so many experiments. In chemistry, we have titration, we had so, you know, solubility of sodium. When I remember in 10th standard, we had experiment of solubility of sodium. Now, sodium is one metal in the periodic table. If you put it in the water, there may be an explosion. Understand? Potassium or sodium. They react badly in water. Understand? 
So anyways, but that type of argumentation is not sufficient to find the existence of the soul. In other words, the soul is inconceivable by human experimental knowledge. The soul is consciousness and consciousness. Conscious. That also in the statement of the Vedas, and we have to accept that. Unlike the bodily changes, there is no change in the soul. So soul is unchangeable. As eternally changeable, the soul remains atomic in comparison to the infinite supreme soul. Like we were classmates, I have not met many of my classmates of college or school for a long time. But I see their Facebook photographs, DPs, and I see that, oh, how they look now on WhatsApp. Huh? I said, this is the same boy, teenage boy, I associated with him, now you see. He's looking so different. So the body changes. Even my body has changed. But the soul doesn't change. This concept is repeated in the Vedas in different ways just to confirm the stability of the conception of soul. A repetition of something is necessary in order that we understand the matter thoroughly without error. Like many times we tell something again and again, especially my mother used to tell me, my father used to tell me again and again, that do like this, don't forget to do like this, don't forget, don't forget. So it is it's to impress on my mind like that. So Krishna again and again is telling Arjuna the same thing, that don't, uh, don't lament, don't lament, soul is eternal. Atachayinam nitya jatam nitya mamanya semratam tathapitam mahabhavo nainam shojutam arhasi. Verse 26, synonyms, atha if high virtue also en of the soul, nitya jatam, always born, nitya forever, va, either manya se, you stink, vritam dead, tatha api still, tvam you, mahabhavo, or mighty ambar, no, never. Enam about the soul, Shuchitum to lament or as he deserve. If, however, you think that the soul or the symptoms of life is always born and dies forever, you still have no reason to lament or my idea. There is always a class of philosophers almost akin to Buddhist who do not believe in the separate existence of the soul beyond the body. So, it's actually another verse. Very important verse actually. So we'll take it next time because uh, one hour already over. Atachainam 2.26. Atachainam nityajatam nityam mamanya semratam tapitam mahabhavo naivam shuchitam arhasi. Again, in this verse, Krishna is telling, don't lament. Now, giving another argument to Arjuna. Huh? Another argument to Arjuna. That don't lament, don't lament, don't lament. Atachayanam nityajatam nityam bhamanya semvritam adapitam mahabhavanayatam shochitam arasi. However, you think that the Atma is always born and, uh, and always dies, there is still no reason for you to grieve. So, Bhagavan is giving arguments from this side, that side, somehow the other is convincing. Either way, when you accept the eternality of the soul, and temporary nature of the body, or whether you accept or don't accept, still you should not lamb it. Krishna is using so many logics here. We'll take that verse next time. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. So, I offer my respect to obeisances to Srila Bhakti Shrub Siddhanti Maharaj, who was actually a great disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. And Bhakti Shrub Siddhanti Goswami Maharaj was, um, if I'm not wrong, he was born in. Bangladesh, his name was Shiv Shankar Day. And he always used to speak truth. Once he went to Bangladesh to preach with other sannyasis and he spoke the truth. So many members of the audience were very angry. But but he always spoke the truth. He was um, a big scholar actually. He was a very big scholar and he wrote uh, so many books. Uh, he was... Uh, all of us associating with Srila Bhakti Bharati Maharaj and Srila Bhakti Prakya Kesha Goswami Maharaj. He was very bold. He was very bold. So I offer my Shraddha Pushpanjali at his lotus feet. May he bless us. Hare Krishna.
Hi Krishna Maharaj, Dhanavad Prams, thank you so much. Thank you to Hi. everybody for joining today. Anybody has any questions? Okay, there's no questions, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Jai Jai. Sisi Guru Gaur Anga Gandharika Giri Dari Radha Vino the Bihari Ji Ki Jai. Om Vishnu Par Shukar Shatta Shishi Mata Bhakti Vedanta Vishnu Deity Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Om Vishnu Par Shukar Shatta Shishi Mata Bhakti Vedanta Dandi Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Nitya Prabhu Vishnu Par Shukar Shatta Shishi Mata Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Nitya Prabhu Vishnu Par Shukar Shatta Shishi Mata Bhakti Vedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Nitya Prabhu Vishnu Par Shukar Shatta Shishi Mata Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Nitya Pravishto and Vishnu Pada Stotra Shata, Shishi Mata Bhakti Pregyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Nitya Pravishto and Vishnu Pada Stotra Shata, Shishi Rabhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Nitya Pravishto Param Bhagavat Pravara Shishi Rabhakti Sordas Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai. Nitya Pravishto Shishi Rabhakti Dananda Bhakti Vinod Hakur Ki Jai. Nitya Pravishto Vishnu Sarva Boma Shishi Rabhakti Das Babaji Maharaj ki jai. Shri Gaudya Vedanta Shri 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 Rabaradeva Vidyabhushan Prabhu ki jai. Shri Rav Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur ki jai. Shri Rav Nartham Shri Rav Namuna Prabhu Thraya ki jai. Shri Rav Krishna Das Kaviraj Go Swami Prabhu ki jai. Shri Rupa Sanatana Pat Raghunath Shri Jeev Gopal Vadas Raghunath Sad Go Swami Prabhu ki jai. Shri Swarup Dhamta Naya Ramananda Rishi Gaur Prasad Vrinda ki jai. Namachara Shri Rav Das Thakur ki jai. Prem Sako Shri Krishna Chai Tanya, Prabhu Nityananda Shri Ativeti Kadadar, Shri Vasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Shri Antar Dweep Maya Kaur Sikmant Dweep, Godrum Adweep Madhya Dweep, Kola Dweep Ridhu Dweep, Janu Dweep Modra Dweep Dweep Rudha Tipatma Karshi Navadip Dham Ki Jai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopi Go Govar Dandvadish Vanatvakar Shri Vraj Mandal Ki Jai, Shri Radha Kun Shamu Kun Ganga Yana Tulasi Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Shri Mati Vrinda Devi Ki Jai Shri Purnamas Yoga Maya Ki Jai Shri Gopishwar Mahadev Ki Jai Shri Jagadnath Baladev Subhadra Kattan Chakra Jiyo Ki Jai Shri Kshetra Mandar Ki Jai Sarva Vigna Vinashkar Shri Narshimadev Ki Jai Bhakta Pravar Shri Prakhalar Maharaj Ki Jai Charadam Ki Jai Char Sampradaya Ki Jai Char Acharya Ki Jai Akar Mataraj Chaitanya Mahat Ki Jai Shishi Keshavij Dhojya Mahat Sakamat Samoa Ki Jai Granth Rashi Madh Bhagavad Ki Jai Shri Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai Shri Hari Naam Sankirtan Ki Jai Anant Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Samagant Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Nitai Gaur Premant Hari Hari Bho Jai Hari 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 Bho Sharang Mahat Prabhu Ki Jai Thank you Anant Koni Prabhu Thank you Shri Pad Bhakti Vidanta Vishuddha and we'll see you all, all tomorrow, dear devotees, for Shripad Bhakti Vedanta Dandi Maharaj's class, and also again in the evening for Shripad Bhakti Vedanta Vishnu Deity Maharaj's class with Madhuriya Kadamani. We will continue. Thank you, Hare Krishna Dandi. Thank you.